Hello everyone and here we are with lesson 10 of our non exam assessment. Today we're looking at design specifications which is one of the really important pages uh, of any project and it's part of section B of the non exam assessment, the NEA. So where are we at the moment? Uh, if you've been following all of these lessons we are currently on lesson 10 uh, and we've at this point completed all of our research that we need before we can get into developing our product as well as uh, our design brief. Uh, where, does the, where does the specification sit in the grand scheme of the entire project? Um, and what is the specification? Uh, the specification is um, split into a couple of different areas. There's two specifications we do in a, a project. We have a design specification and manufacturing specification. So let's break down the words, design, the act of creating or developing an idea. Uh, obviously, normally we design paper on pen and we could design using models, CAD, got a variety of options there. And a specification is a list of criteria uh, a product must meet to be successful. Okay, so a design specification is a list of criteria that your designs must, should and could follow to be considered successful. So here's the mark scheme. Uh, as ever, we're really focusing on the top marks here because that's what we're all aiming for. Um, and I've highlighted there in the little box what we're looking for. So a comprehensive design specification with very high level of justification linking to the needs and wants of the client and user, which will then fully inform subsequent design stages. So we need to have a comprehensive design specification, which means we're gonna have written about all the different areas that our design might cover. And we're also going to make sure we are clearly justifying it. And that's going to be linking it to our research and linking it to our clients needs. Those are what we're going to be doing. So writing some really clear points about what we're going to design and then linking it and giving reasons why we want that from our design. So the little task for us here is where we want to link the uh, different products I've listed there with different possible specification points. If you'd like to pause for a moment and have a go at that, it should take you a couple of moments uh, and then we will carry on. So here we're gonna go through the answers really quickly. Uh, so number one, it must hold at least 15,000 people. Uh, I'm going to go for a football stadium for that. Uh, ideally, Lincoln City's new football stadium would be 15,000 people. Uh, I'm a big Lincoln City fan, you can tell from the scarf behind my head, that way. Uh, Anti-lock brakes must be fitted as standard, so that'll be for a car. There should be four bedrooms, one of which must have its own bathroom, that'll be a specification for a house, for somebody designing a house. It must have four tiers, each made of cheese or pork pie. I've gone for a wedding cake for this. Uh, this is what I wanted in my wedding cake. Uh, my now wife overruled me and said we had to actually have cake in a wedding cake. Number five, should give off 500 lumens of light. So that's a really good, clear specification point for a lamp, in terms of how much light it gives off. Number six, must have red and white stripes and Lincoln City logo on the left chest. That would be a football kit. Uh, Seven, must be able to support the weight of a laptop without breaking. So that's going to be a piece of furniture. Okay, it can hold uh, the weight of a laptop as we are right now. Uh, should have a choice of colours. Uh, that would be a uh, mobile phone. And should travel at 15 knots whilst not rocking more than 15 degrees. It's quite trying to be a specific one about an air, aircraft carrier. I don't actually know if those are good specification points for an aircraft carrier. I've not done that much in terms of designing large scale boats ever. So that's some example points. So what we're going to do in our first task is we're going to write a minimum of 10 different specification points. At this point, the more you probably write, you can get to 15, probably going to be covering all the different areas in a bit more detail. Um, so we're going to use the headings that are on the next slide to give us the areas we might discuss. But what we might look for is some of our sentence starters below. So my product will do this. My product should do this. So maybe not as important. So really important ones would be using the terms must and will or has to do. The less important ones might use the word should. And even 
less in terms of importance, might use the word could. Uh, so those are the, the sort of sentence starters you might want to use. And depends on the product we're, we're doing. My example there is my clock must be themed for a Lincoln City fan with colours of red and white. Can you see a theme through this presentation? So these are some of the main areas I would normally discuss for a specification. So function, what the product's going to do, how it's going to work, what it's going to look like, so aesthetics, and then manufacture. So the materials, joining methods, finishes. So there's top three there, F, A, and M. Uh, my students in school will re remember this acronym, but we always talk about DAFAM in uh, design technology. And those are the big three that most of our exam questions come back to, particularly at A-level, uh, and also most of our uh, uh, notes in our designing, normally around functional aesthetics manufacture. It's really important that we focus on those three. But we might have some further points where we talk about safety, environment, cost, user, size. We might also talk about product interaction. That's a little bit of a, a, a woolly one, I suppose, where we might talk about how that pro how your product's going to interact with other products. Is it going to attach to a wall? Is it going to sit on a desk? Is it going to um, hold something else? So how, how is it going to have a, a space to hold a mobile phone or a pen, depending on the product you're making? So being really specific. So rather than saying it must hold a pen, it must have a hole that's 10 millimeters wide for a pen to sit in. So that's really specific, really clear uh, in terms of getting the sizes right. So specification, the word specific is at the front of that. You want to be really clear, really detailed in our specification points. So those are the areas we're going to discuss. 45 minutes, it's quite a long time really to come up with your uh, at least 10 points. Uh, I would look for more, but I've given you a minimum target there. And once we're finished, you may then move on to the next slide. So the hard bit's writing your specification points, which you've done. The, I suppose, easier bit is often explaining why you want those points. Because uh, writing a specification is you pulling things out of your head as to what you want. Uh, justifying it is then just linking it back to the work you've already done. So the mark scheme is really clear and asks you to justify your specification point. So my example I've got here is my lamp must be at least 20 centimetres tall, but no taller than 50 centimetres. OK, just some very specific measurements, sort of a maximum and minimum size. This is because over 20 centimetres, the light will be able to reach over my client's homework. Uh, but it needs to be less than 50 centimetres because there's some shelves above it. I'm trying to make it really clear that it links to the research that I've undertaken. And that's a, a, a really clear, good example. So I should have probably done looked at this slide earlier, um, but I would do in a lesson I'd flick to this one earlier in, in school. Um, there's lots of different ways in which you can lay out this page. Um, historically, one of the easiest ways I've found to do this is as a table. So you write down the area of the specification point. So this point is about function. Then I write the specification point. Then the next bit of the table is a justification. That's a really straightforward way, really easy for an examiner to mark it and go, okay, yes, you've got specification points. Yes, you've got justification. It's really clear to see. Uh, another one could be that you write it as bullet points. So you write a bullet point as your specification. Then you write a sub bullet point as your just justification. So on separate lines. Uh, really useful and easy for us to copy the specification points later. We'll need to do that in our evaluation. And I've given a, a waggle example here of another one of my students uh, that has, has done it in the specification points and highlighted in different colours which bits are justifications, which bits are the actual specification point. So that is how to write a design specification, separating out writing the specification points and separating out the justification both of which, if done well, will get you uh, really high marks. Okay, You can't get into the high marks without justifying your points. So make sure you do link it back to that research. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this session and hopefully by now some of you are considering becoming Lincoln City fans as well. Uh, take care and look forward to our future lessons.